New United will return after a word from our sponsors. When it's time to sortie, you don't simply grab something off the shelf. You don't settle for whatever's laying around. You want dependability. You want precision craftsmanship. And you want something that's going to help you keep a cool head in the heat of combat. That's why there's Barry. Our precision high-speed capacitor system delivers punishing power at the push of a button, sending your foes back to the black where they came from. And with our newest line of subsystem generators that reach near superconduction, your power stays at its peak for more important things, like life support. When you leave for battle, we know you choose bearing in your lineup. And it's why we keep making products the way that we do. We want you to come back. Mention this ad at your local dealer and get a 5% rebate off your next purchase of bearing personal firearms. And don't forget to ask about our newest line of M7A laser cannons too. Bearing. Fight like you mean it. New United. Crime Watch with Alyssa Kent. There's a point where I'm just going to stop talking. Clearly, Imperator Costigan and the rest of the UEE seem to be okay with the fact that, every single day, the good citizens are under attack from thieves and bandits that strike without mercy, rob the people blind, and then flee like cowards. Last week's vicious attack on an RSI mover transport, which left 58 dead and almost a million in property and liability damage, is the latest in a bloody history of the war raging along our own borders. For decades, the criminal element has exploited our proximity to the Banu Protectorate, using their territory as a safe haven at the first sign of confrontation. If they cross that border, that's it. Case closed. Frankly, it's a stain on the ideal of law enforcement. The Imperator and Senate need to address the issue, or more lives and money will be lost. Creating a government provision to cross into a sovereign Banu planet system will be complicated, but I think both the Banu and the UEE will benefit from at least streamlining the process to allow advocacy agents to pursue fugitives. I understand this is a tricky political situation. When I've suggested such a law in the past, many of my critics flooded my line with complaints. So let's take a look at the two biggest issues in creating such provision. The fundamental structure of the Banu government prevents such a provision. Everyone knows the Banu aren't the most organized civilization. It's true. Their system of planet states places a heavy burden on self-governance, but the Banu do have a system in place to vote on species-wide laws. They simply need to call a gathering. It's a lengthy process with weeks, sometimes months of debate, but if provided with a polished law, I think it could stand a good chance of passing. It's no secret that many of the Banu planets act as a global bazaar and black market. So, cargo stolen by pirates in UEE territory can be sold cheap, and sometimes illegally, on a Banu world. While you could make the argument that portions of the proceeds from these sales go directly to the government itself, that shouldn't prevent even attempting such a bill. If we've learned anything in the nearly thousand years of human expansion, it's that people, and by that I mean human, Jian, Banu, even Tavarin, and probably Vandal, are a mess of contradictions. In any species, there are good and bad, moral and immoral, just and unjust. That's just what makes life so weird and interesting. While critics may think that the Banu will shoot down the bill on sight, why shouldn't we give them the benefit of the doubt and at least try? A streamlined process will inevitably replace due process. We all know our history. Part of the UEE's standard operating procedure is to do whatever's necessary to escape the shadow of the Messer era. While that fear of increasing government power seems to take root in catchphrases like, it's a slippery slope, I can't help but believe that any effort to crack down on the thriving criminal syndicates is going to lead to fascism. Again. I understand that while the situation seems clear-cut, there is a veritable Pandora's box of complicated legal and political ramifications to consider. But our senators need to at least raise the issue to figure a way to help relieve the massive impact on trade, the economy, and on the lives of the citizens that these pirates attack. They need to start the discussion, because right now, the situation is just not cutting it.
This is Captain Bane. Thank you for taking the time to listen to SC Lorecast's telling of Crime Watch, a new United Dispatch. This official Star Citizen lore can be found within the Spectrum Dispatch section of the Roberts Space Industries website. This has been something of a departure from the norm in that it combines both fan fiction and official lore from the official site, and I'm obliged to offer up a heartfelt thank you to Vadrin Malik for his work with the Bering commercial at the opening of this lorecast. I might have put some polish on the final presentation, but the script, the voiceover work, and the general feel of the production was all him. Vadrin, you did a great job, man, and I can't wait to get my hands on the next one. Vadrin is a co-host on Station 42, along with Traz Dice Failure Ion. Their show's goal is to put a spotlight on the Star Citizen community members and players, to give them a chance to weigh in on the hot topics and showcase the actual person behind the avatar. Links to both the Twitch and YouTube channels are provided in the description. They're both great down-to-earth guys that I have the personal privilege of calling friends, and their next show is Wednesday the 28th at 7 o'clock Central Standard Time. Now generally, I'm not offered the opportunity for such a convenient segue, but somehow I have that chance today, as the next person on my list of shoutouts happens to be the scheduled guest speaker for the aforementioned Station 42 coming up on Wednesday. That is none other than Ms. Hartz, who was kind enough to give life and a little bit of attitude to Alyssa Kent, the reporter featured in today's Lorecast. Ms. Hartz has the dubious honor of being the SC Lorecast voice actor with the longest running narration outside of myself. Having spoken at length for a given character, I can tell you that it's not as easy as it sounds, and she handled her task with both a skill and poise that I admire. Like Vadrin, Ms. Hartz also has a Twitch presence central to Star Citizen. While her channel is more focused on gameplay and well worth the watch, she also happens to be a recurring speaker on Diverse the Verse, a Star Citizen talk show that explores the game and community from a woman's perspective. If you're looking for a fresh take on the Star Citizen community and game content, it's certainly worth keeping tabs on. Finally, it seems that I may have been a tad reticent in promoting the platforms through which you can experience our lorecasts. Therefore, I'd like to provide a quick listing. SC Lorecast can be found on sclorecast.com, YouTube, SoundCloud, Vimeo, Google Play, iTunes, Stitcher, Facebook, and Patreon. I generally post updates with direct links to the latest episode on the official Star Citizen forums, the Star Citizen subreddit forum, Facebook, and Twitter. Most recently, we were afforded a time slot on The Base, Star Citizen's premier online radio station. There, you can catch our most recent Lorecasts on Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And that about wraps up my most long-winded outro to date. Thank you for listening. For my Patreon supporters, thank you for helping me out each month. I hope you're enjoying the blooper reels. And finally, to all you Star Citizen fans out there, we'll see you in the verse. <laughs>